Hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Lyudmila Milchev. I'm part of the Nagios tech team. And now I'd like to introduce Mike Weber, who will be speaking through this training session. Um, he's a lead trainer at um, spidertools.com. And uh, they've been providing Linux training for the last 12 years. Um, they train up to 200 people a week. And the part of the Linux training is also uh, Nagios basic and advanced training as well. Um, and on this session, um, Mike will talk about monitoring a Linux mail server. And I'll uh, let him uh, fill you with the details. Uh, thank you. Okay, when we look at this uh, Linux mail server, we want to do a couple things here. Is in this example, I want to show you a, a Linux server, but I also want to show you some different things that you can do with plugins. This is one of the keys: is trying to figure out what plugin you're going to use for your problem. And we we're talking earlier with a couple people here, other people in the conference. It's almost the curse: is you've got to have, you got to make some decisions about your monitoring. And you, those decisions are going to have an impact when you get down the road. So uh, that's some of the things that we want to look at. All of the sessions that I'm doing, I really want to think about choices. Choices are important because they have those long-lasting implications. So let's look at a couple things here. Okay, so we're looking at uh, a couple different things here as examples. Public ports, monitoring public ports on a mail server, um, port 25, 995 if you've got uh, POPS, IMAPS. So one of the advantages of public ports is, hey, they're easy to monitor, but it doesn't tell you a whole lot. They're up, they're down. You really don't know if you can deliver mail. You don't know if the mail can be read. So there's a lot of other things you need to do. SNMP. So I want to show you some examples with SNMP because it's just a little bit different. It gives you some advantages that you could do on an internal network. Um, you could even do it remotely. I'm going to show you an example of uh, monitoring with SNMP and doing it using SSH. Of course, you'd have to use some kind of, uh, you can't send SNMP over a, a WAN. So we're going to look at that option. NRPE, so it's executing the plugins on the mail server. Gives you some options there. Uh, Perl. And the Perl plugin we want to look at is going to help you with the email delivery. Are we able to deliver mail? Are we able to read headers? Are we able to read actual text in an email? Those are things that you have to know as a mail administrator because just because port 25 or whatever port is up is not going to be the, the total solution. Um, I'm going to show you how to do most of this using SSH as well. So we're going to use Nagios XI and SSH proxy because that may be an option if you're the box, the mail server you're monitoring is actually uh, out there on a public internet, you're going to have to do something more secure. You're not going to be able to do some of those other options. Okay, so one of the things, if you guys have questions, just interrupt me and let's deal with the questions as we go along so that you can get those answered um, as we go through here. Um, SMT SMTP port 25 what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to know that the port is up. We also want to know response times. Uh, it's going to be important to know that the mail server is responding within some parameters. So we want to be able to set some parameters to know uh, maybe the mail server is experiencing huge load. Uh, one of I'm working with a company currently where they're dealing with um, 
antivirus is a, is, a, is a serious problem with the mail server because if you get a lot of viruses that you have to scan or if you get big mail content that you're scanning, your server load goes way up. And so those kinds of things, which typically take a lot of resources, because most of those are Perl scripts that are executing, are going to take a lot of uh, resources. And you need to know, is my server slow because of what? Why, what's happening here? Uh, it's not the mail can't be delivered. It's just having a hard time processing it. Uh, you probably want to graph those things. Um, graphing, being able to have an administrator so that they can view a graph quickly can tell them more than having to read a whole bunch of text. And so it gives you some peaks and valleys to give you an evaluation. Well, yeah, um, our response times are either uh, slow at this point. Why would that be? Our response times are faster or we see patterns. So visually, it's a little bit easier to capture that information and, and find out that there's something going on there. Same with other ports. So there's an example. Um, and this is not uh, the greatest example, but you can see in here you have peaks and valleys, and you'd be looking for patterns in these kinds of things. This is the kind of thing that, you know, this is just pretty simple stuff, but it may give you an indication that every four hours we get this peak. Why? What is happening every four hours? So that will give you a way to deal with some network issues or um, look into more detail for sure. Here's an example of core. And this is just public mail ports. And we're looking at core. Um, and so a number of you I talked to are running core. So when you look at this, here's check TCP. This is the plugin. The exclamation mark is going to be the definition between your arguments. And so your first argument is a port number, 25. And then you've got your warning, 3, and your critical 5. The one thing you don't want to do is ever take uh, the configuration that you've, you see in a book or you, you see uh, that comes by default with Nagios, you want to think about these numbers. For example, is three seconds really a good warning time? Or maybe it should be two. Maybe over a network connection that's not so hot, maybe it should be seven. But you do need to think about these things. You need to test them, evaluate them, so you're making intelligent decisions. It's real easy to get into a Nagios configuration. I was going to say stupid configuration. But poor choices have poor output. So as, as an administrator, you want to make good choices in the settings that you set here. Because you don't want Nagios to alert you when you shouldn't be alerted, or you don't want Nagios to avoid a, a, a notification when, hey, you, you needed to know something like that. So think about those uh, options there. This is the same thing with Nagios XI. So with Nagios XI, uh, you're looking at, you've got a config name, you've got your service description, SMT, SMTP, um, you're using the same plugin, check TCP. You've got uh, the user one is your uh, macro for your where your plugins directory is. H is your host address, and then you've got a couple arguments. Dash P, that's your port. So that's the same thing as the config that we looked at previously. But your second argument then is this is a timeout. Dash T six. So you can do the same things with XI, whether you use a wizard to set up XI or whether you do it manually and just go into the Nagios Core configuration and set it up much like you would in Nagios Core. So let's look at example here. It always helps to look at something that's a little more uh, real. So here is a Nagios XI. Uh, this is actually at... Um